So, now you know what we are, now you know what you are. Welcome back, movie fans, as I hit the trivia for one of my favorite vampire films. The Boardwalk, 80s Tracks, Bad Biker Boys, and pretty much everything else in this film is too hard to overlook. So sit back and enjoy some Chinese worms, uh, I, I mean noodles, they're only noodles, as I rapid fire the most interesting facts for Lost Boys 1987. And as always, if you learned something new, consider liking the video and subscribing to help support my small channel. Santa Cruz, known as Santa Carla where the movie takes place, was once plagued with a reputation of being the murder capital of the world because of a series of very brutal murders by three different very disturbed men in the early 70s. Because of John Lenny Frazier, Herbert Mullen, and Edmund Kemper, Santa Cruz endured 28 murders over a 30-month period between 1970 and 1973. The new location of the Atlantis Fantasy World comic book store is owned by Joe Ferreira II, who still carries the original number one issue of Vampires Everywhere that Sam reads in the film. The comic was created only for the film, and its opening page is signed by all the cast members from the movie. The owner allows any shopper to hold it and take a photo with it free of charge. This was Corey Haim and Corey Feldman's first film together, which marked the start of a popular 80s trend, The Two Corys, in which Feldman and Haim starred together in a number of teenage films. Filming began on June 2, 1986 and ended on June 23, 1986, after three weeks of filming. Gerard McMahon wrote the theme song Cry Little Sister to the movie after only reading the script and without ever seeing a frame of the film. Corey Haim said that all of the blood had glitter in it to give it a shimmering effect and was slimier than other fake blood. Several thousand local residents answered the casting call for family types, street people, punks, surfers, roller skaters, and one brain-dead hippie. Some 2,000 of the applicants were signed for several nights' work on what was the largest film production ever brought to that area at that time. In the cave of the Lost Boys, you can see a poster of Jim Morrison, who recorded the original version of People Are Strange with the Doors. Also, when Star and Laddie are being carried into Sam's room, you can see a poster of Echo and the Bunny Men, who recorded the version used in this movie. This movie invented the phrase, Vamp Out, which had passed into common usage on the TV series Buffy the Vampire Slayer, 1997. Corey Feldman, who played Edgar Frog, almost wasn't in the movie. At the time, Corey struggled with drug abuse at a young age and showed up to to work coming down from a cocaine binge. Director Joel Schumacher was very upset that Corey kept dozing off and was unable to continue filming, so he fired him, but hired him back the next day after Corey apologized and swore to come to work prepared from then on. The names of the Frog Brothers, Edgar and Allen, are a reference to Edgar Allan Poe, the poet and well-known writer of horror fiction. Kiefer Sutherland was originally reluctant to star in the film until he heard that Joel Schumacher had lined up NXS and Jimmy Barnes to sing some of the songs of the soundtrack. Kiefer had spent a summer in Australia when he was a child and became fans of their music. Timmy Capello, as the oily saxophone player on the dock, made a name for himself by playing in the touring band of Tina Turner during her spectacular comeback tours in the mid-1980s. In the dinner scene with Max and the Frog Brothers, Alan puts out candles with his fingers. Nobody told Jameson Newlander that he had to wet his fingers first, so he ended up getting burnt. In later takes, he dipped his hands in a basin of water before putting out the candles. Characters in the movie say the name Michael approximately 118 times. Jason Patrick wasn't keen on playing the role of Michael as he didn't want to be in a vampire movie. It took several meetings with director Joel Schumacher who eventually persuaded him to be the lead character. It has been highly theorized by fans that Grandpa was actually a half-vampire and that the root beer was actually animal blood due to his hobby as a taxidermist. Jim Carrey was considered for the role of David. He previously portrayed a vampire in the film Once Bitten, 1985. Fred Gwynn was considered for the part of Max. When they're eating Chinese food, David leaves his child chopsticks sticking straight out of his and Michael's food. In Chinese and Japanese culture, it is offensive to give a meal with chopsticks sticking into it because it is like wishing death upon its recipient. One of the most memorable scenes in the movie was actually filmed outside of Santa Cruz in Santa Clarita. The Iron Horse Trailhead Trestle Bridge that the vampire gang hangs from in the film is located off Interstate 5 on the Magic Mountain Parkway, about 40 miles north of Los Angeles. The bridge now features a pedestrian walkway for fans who would prefer to cross over it instead of hanging underneath. The vampire prosthetics were manufactured in foam latex, the best method at the time. There are only two green screen shots in the movie. With the budget so low, these only last a couple of seconds each and both occur in the climatic finals fight scene. 
The first is when Sam is pulled into the air by vampire Dwayne. The second is the long-awaited moment when David and Michael fly at each other to fight. The movie didn't originally end on a joke. After the scene with Grandpa at the refrigerator, it was supposed to cut to the surviving Lost Boys regrouping in the sunken hotel. The last shot was of a mural on the wall made in the early 1900s with Max in it, looking exactly the same as he did today. All of this appeared in an early draft of the script, but ultimately was never filmed. In the scene where Sam and the Frog Brothers stake Marco while he sleeps, they are pursued by the rest of the vampire gang as they try to escape back into the daylight. David grabs Sam's leg, but Sam manages to drag David's hand into the sunlight where it catches fire. A tear then slides down David's face as he clutches his hand in agony. Apparently, the tear running down his face was actually caused by Kiefer Sutherland's contact lenses, which were stinging terribly, but they decided to keep it in as it looked really good and was in context. The original screenplay written by Jan Fisher and James Jeremiah's was originally about a bunch of goony type 5th, 6th grade kid vampires, with the Frog Brothers being chubby 8-year-old Cub Scouts and the star being a boy instead of a love interest. The original inspiration came from James, who caught upon the notion that Peter Pan could fly, visited Wendy and her brothers at night, and never grew old. The simple notion that Peter Pan was a vampire was the genesis for the story. In the first draft of the script, the character of David was originally named Peter, and other characters also had names from the Peter Pan story. In the final draft, many name changes were made, but originally the two brothers were Michael and John, which was later changed to Sam, and the mother's name was Wendy. The grandfather character was never a part of the original story, but later created in the draft by Jeremy Bohm, who was hired to do the final rewrite. Joel Schumacher hated the original ideas and told the producers he would only sign on if he could change them to teenagers, as he thought it would be much sexier and more interesting. David is impaled on a pair of antlers and doesn't disintegrate like the other vampires. Despite what Max says later, he is not really dead. This was intended to be picked up in the sequel, The Lost Girls, which was scripted but never made. In the Wildstorm comic miniseries The Lost Boys Reign of the Frogs 2008, which helps bridge the 20-year gap between the films, it's implied that David not only survived the impaling but went on to create Shane, the head vampire in Lost Boys, The Tribe, 2008. According to director Joel Schumacher, the scene in which Dwayne, played by Billy Worth, is electrocuted by the stereo after being shot with an arrow by Sam, took two weeks to film. The entire shoot only took three weeks, and Dwayne's death scene only lasts 30 seconds on screen. As a personal safety announcement, it's probably not a good idea to drink from a random person's personal cup in a dark and creepy cave. But hey, that's just me. A super big thanks to all those who made it to the end and learned about all the fun facts for The Lost Boys 1987. I'll have more trivia videos on the way, so until then, keep watching that cinema and stay cool, guys. Just like one big happy family. Your boys and my boys. Great. The blood-sucking Brady Bunch.